Welcome to uh, the Discipleship Hour, Thinking Matters uh, for the week. Uh, I wish you were here so that we could have a conversation, but uh, we're all going to be a little bit healthier because we're not together. But we'll have a conversation um, regardless of that. So the thing that we're going to talk about this week has to do with missions. This is still Missions Month here at CBC, and so we need to talk a little bit about missions and what that means, especially at a time like this. This is a time when we need to be very missional in our thinking. Um, as individuals, as families, as a church, because uh, it's a time in the world where there's chaos, and, and during those times, God often moves, and so we need to be prepared for that. So we all know about the Great Commission in Matthew 28, where Jesus said, all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you, and surely I'm with you low to the end of the age. So for us as Christians, that's a mandate that we often use to go forward and to, to make disciples of people. And even in Acts, there was pushback against that, where the church tried to stop the disciples, and yet the disciples said, as in Acts 4.19, it says, are we going to obey man rather than God? And so they continued with the mandate that Jesus had given them. Well, that mandate still exists for us as we think about missions. But there is still pushback. There's pushback from the culture that you really shouldn't do that. And so that's what I'd like to discuss today in the next, I'll say, 10 minutes. Um, if you can stick with us, concentrate, you can do it. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about those forces pushing back upon our notion of missions. So one of the first things we need to understand is there's a concept when someone comes up to you and says, well, it's wrong for you to force your ideas upon me or upon other people. And so that sometimes stops us. We say, wow, we shouldn't do that. But the reality is that statement itself is, is, a, is a fallacy. It's a refuting argument. The statement itself is forcing an idea that someone else has upon you. So you can negate that statement and say, you are doing the same thing to me right now by forcing your idea that I should not share my ideas upon other people. So don't let that stop you. Who said that sharing an idea with somebody is wrong. That person may have that opinion, but there's no, there's no um, substantiation for that. The other thing I'd like to think about is what really makes nations or people groups different? In the culture, there's sometimes notions of race, but you have to understand that as we as human beings, are, we're all humans, we all have the same ancestry, we all have a commonality of being human, and granted there may be slightly different genetics in groups of people who've been together and breeded together, and there's definitely differences in ideas and culture, the way people dress, the language that they use, but in reality, all people are just people. And what really makes people different is it, it's really the ideas that they hold, the kind of clothes that they wear, the language. Those things are not uh, the same everywhere, and those are the things that really make us different. And so the sharing of ideas, what, there's really nothing wrong with sharing ideas with a different group that has a different set of ideas because there's, that's what makes people different, that's what makes things go on. Sometimes we're also pushed back by the notion that um, cultural norms shouldn't be altered in a group. Well, cultural norms, I mean, where do those really come from? They come from that culture. So are we going to say that we should have just left Nazi Germany to their ideas? No. We all recognize those ideas as a bad idea, and so we, as a matter of fact, in very harsh ways, forced to stop those ideas because they were bad ideas. We never want to leave people in harm's way by bad ideas. And so what ideas are, are going to be the idea? Well, if you're, a, I'll just say, a progressive who doesn't believe in God, then you have no absolute, and everybody's ideas are just their ideas because there's no ultimate idea out there if there's no God. And so then you could make the argument that it's all relative and who says their idea is better than another idea. But if you believe that there's a God, then there are absolutes or what we'll call universals, which even the atheist sometimes appeals to universals. But where do universals come from in a random world? From nowhere. So as we move forward with ideas, we have to understand that our ideas have credence outside of us as individuals, but in the nature and the character of God. And so as we do mission work, what we're really doing are trying to share ideas with people, not to allow people in harm's way, 
ultimate harm of the wages of sin, but even short-term harm sometimes in the way in which a people group may live or not live. You know, you have to understand that the notions of civilization really find their roots in Christian thinking. The fact that we wear clothes, for example, uh, that really comes out of when God clothed Adam and Eve. The fact that the way we deal with sexuality in ways like marriage, those ideas are good ideas, and you have to remember that those are Christian ideas. Those ideas don't exist in other places, unless they've, I'll just say, actually been borrowed from Christianity. Many worldviews borrow from Christianity, even notions of what's right and what's wrong. They have no source of those, if they don't believe in God, for example, whereas we have a source of those ideas. So our ideas are often, often we'll just say, hijacked and used as if they belong to that group, which really has no right to use them unless they know the source of them. And so as we move forward with our ideas, though, we do have to be careful that we don't carry too much of our own culture um, with us when we do mission work. And I think that's where our harm has been. And you could argue, and I, and I would agree with you, if you said that there has been um, evil things done in the name of Christianity. I would say that that is true, but that does not make Christianity evil. That may make the acts which were done or the, the people who did that have interpreted or used it wrong, but Christianity itself, the claims of, of who God is, have not done evil. Those ideas have actually been good for the world. The majority of hospitals, the majority of education has been brought to the world by Christianity, by wanting people to understand who Christ is. So Christianity's ideas are good for the world, but not every cultural idea of America is good for the world. You know, we have to sort out what is really biblical and what is cultural. Is that, for example, the notion of clean water is good for everyone. So that's a piece of civilization which actually helps people. And some of that comes out of Christianity in our understanding of the world, of order, of disease. You know, many early scientists were Christians. They wanted to understand more about the material world and then help other people with that. Medicine, healthcare, there are things which come out of a Christian worldview, which you might not see, for example, in other worldviews where cows might be sacred and people could starve and there is a cow. Whereas we as Christians would say, cows are not the same as people, they're not sacred, and they can be eaten. So ideas have to be sorted. That's the biggest difficulty for all of us when we come into a culture. Does everyone have to wear clothes that look like my clothes? Do they all have to listen to music like my music? No, so they, music is biblical, there's gonna be music in heaven, but is that music on the same instruments that I use? Are the clothes the same, the same material? Are they worn in the same fashion? Do our houses look the same? We don't have to move our culture. We have to move the biblical ideas of right and wrong as we do our mission work. And so for you as a family right now in the midst of a corona crisis, I would, I would ask you to think about the fact that our ideas can be really helpful to stabilizing the world. To people's observation, the world is unraveling. And if you think that all the world is, is the culture that we have and the way of life that we have, then I would have to agree that it is kind of unraveling economically, healthcare, social structures. I'm talking to you by video, we're not together. Things are changing, but there are some things which are unchanging. Those are the things of God. Those are the things of the God who created all of creation and put it into motion and we were put in it, and we live, we make decisions. There are ramifications within the fallen world which affect all of us. But God, who's outside of that fallen world, is the same today and will be there tomorrow. You have a good day.